Yeah, I am so excited to be here with you. We're going to have a two-parter tonight and Thursday. So this is the card that inspired our projects for this week. It looks like this. I made this slimline for the YouTube hop celebrating the new release. And let me see if I can get, there you go. So you can see these die cuts are inked, glittered, and then also um, like glossy. And I love this effect. I absolutely love how this turned out. And I wanted to play around with some different colors and some different stencil accents in the background. Um, and just kind of play with this idea and feature this new die set. This is the Big Love You Dies. <coughs> and I think it's so cute. On the back, it has all of these ideas of how you can lay everything out. So we're gonna kind of go for this shape um, with this round. And I just think it's gonna be super cute. I wanna make some regular A2s since I did make this slim line. Um, and for anybody who's been here before, it is actually on a card base and everything. I'm sure you're shocked. Um, so yeah, I have my glossy gel. I have my touch of gel. I've got glitter. I have ink. Um, so because we're going to gloss and gel all of this up and we're going to make some glitter paste while we're at it, um, I do want to give myself plenty of time for these to dry. So we're going to make some of our elements tonight and then they will dry. And then on Thursday, we will make our two, we'll assemble our two cards. So I think that's super, I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, I wanna do a little check in. I see lots of people in the comments. So I saw Heather was in first. I'm so glad to have you back too, Heather. Um, Virginia, Annette, Shirley, Susan, Becky, Barbara, such a good crew tonight, Lori, um, Melody, hello, Dawn, hello. Um, thank you guys all for coming to hang out with me. So I am going to go ahead and jump out of um, this. There we go. So this is kind of where we're starting. Hey, Raquel. Thanks for checking in. Um, so I, I think what I want to do first is my stenciling. Actually, you know what? We'll save that for the end so I can clean my stencils really well when we're done. I never clean them properly when I do them in like the middle. So let's start with our die cutting. We'll get our die cuts. The trickiest part, if you guys have been here before and you know me, is going to be putting these somewhere to dry where I don't ruin them. That's going to be the fun part. So we're going to use, I think we're going to do the love you the way that it has on the back here right with the love and the you but then i also want to play with this love you where the you is big and the heart so we're gonna play around with that or maybe the xoxo well that could be cute maybe we'll do that instead we can do like xoxo Should we do, oh, they use the heart as the V. I usually use the heart as the O. Maybe we'll just do the actual letters and we won't use the heart. And then XOXO. Um, I am gonna do these little hearts because I think they will come in very handy for X making little accents around this. Hey, Melissa. Thanks for checking in. Um, and I am also going to um, die cut the U while we're at it. Because I also glossy gelled this little cursive U. So my scissors. Um, for this version and I really love how that turned out as well. Okay, so I think that's everything. But we're gonna obviously have to do a couple rounds. So hey Connie. Um so yeah I just think 
when we have these really big, bold dies to work with, that by all means, you can just like die cut them and let them stand on their own because they are already so bold and fun. But if you want to take the time to add that little bit of extra, I think it just is even more impactful because they're big enough to like hold all of this um, love and attention that we're going to put on them. Um, also, to be really honest with you, the reason that I did these letters this way the first time was uh, my washi tape was too sticky. And uh, when I went to ink blend on, I think it was the heart. I think it was the, the, this heart. Um, I had ripped my paper a little bit, like I had torn the very top section of my paper a little. And so um, the ink didn't stick right, it looked blotchy. But when I went over it with the glossy gel, like with the touch of gloss um, is technically that one, this little guy, when I covered it in that, it smoothed everything out, which is what I was hoping it would do. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's always the best. <laughs> like a, it's not a foolproof solution, but I do encourage you when stuff like that happens to not give up. I know it can be very hard to keep pushing through and try to think of some way that you can make it work. But in this case, especially, it was definitely worth it. Um, and I love how it turned out enough so that we're recreating it on purpose now. Also make sure that if you're gonna do this, you use um, either very low track tape or um, very well loved tape that doesn't have a lot of grip to it. And that's why I usually keep a lot of my washi tape scraps after each time I use them. I keep them right here along the edge of my desk for that exact reason. The longer you have them, they'll still hold your paper enough, but they won't tear anything anymore. I also really, for some reason, love the circle that comes out of that um, O. I think that's really cute. Okay. Hearts and X. So we need an E. Just up. Oh, oh. E. So we just need lots and lots of. That will stick with this little tiny heart in here. Because I don't exactly know how many of those I'm going to need. Sorry, normally I try to get all of this stuff cut out ahead of time so that we're ready to go. But my best friend and I and our families just did late Christmas night. We were all very busy over the weekend and yesterday. So wanted to try to get as much time as I could with her and then politely kicked them out. It does look like a Pokemon ball. You were very correct, that O. Um, and it, it goes across, but once we, it cut, does kind of leave a little bit of an indent. But once we go through again with that uh, touch of gloss, all of that will, it'll get erased. That's the same, yeah. Take a scrap. We just need one last, one last circle. And then we will start our ink blending. And I grabbed the teal and the purple just trying to find other kind of lighter um, shades. But if you really wanted to try to make this 
slightly more masculine if you were going to be giving this as a Valentine's Day card to someone who prefers the color blue. I forgot we made our person use that one word die. Um, you could absolutely do this with like the barbershop. Maybe you could pop in some other color greens, whatever you want. I also think this would be super classy in um, black and white. I know black and white's sometimes not a very often used combo in card making. I love black and white. Okay, so those are all of our dies. Come on. <laughs> Let's get them back on this paper with our adhesive. Um, did anybody get anything fun craft-wise? I mean, honestly, or whatever-wise, but crafting specifically, I guess, um, for Christmas. Maybe give themselves anything lovely for Christmas. I personally have um, a couple different pink shades of flock and some more um colored card stock from pink and main on the way i got my shipping notification today so next week we can play with those crinkling that right up against my headphones probably not the most helpful okay and i don't want to ink land on here because this is that good heavyweight card stock let's swap that out for a piece of computer paper Dawn gifted herself some, some black and orange flock after last week. Love that. We love to hear that. I'm going to grab two bunches. Oh, Susan got gift cards for her favorite craft stores. Oh, Connie got alcohol markers and lots of supplies. That's amazing. My best friend got me a very quiet air compressor so that I can practice airbrushing with my Copics. I'm very excited for that. So we are going to do love with our teal and we'll do our XOs with our purple. So let's start with our teal. This is that lakeside ink and I'm going to tap off the excess from my brush and just start at the bottom. And I wanna build this color really slowly. So I take my brush with just a tiny bit of ink, like a little more than halfway. And then the, the less that I'm tapping off, the smaller those little circles are so that we would keep all of that ink right down at the bottom. And the color is gonna darken when we go in with our gel, that the water in that gel is gonna kind of reactivate this ink a little bit and it deepens that color. So we don't have to worry about going super crazy, building that color up because it's all going to intensify anyway. Virginia got some gift cards. Ooh, Spellbinders Better Presses. Um, lots of gift cards. Ooh, a tool chest, Barbara. That's fun. Um, so yeah, it looks like a lot of people got gift cards. So I guess people are going to be doing a lot of shopping in January. I think that's, that's true for every... Um, not niche, like every store category, right? Um, oh, Heather got a laser printer so she can use her mini mink more. That's so fun. If you have a, a laser printer that does the toner, right? So you can print out whatever you want with a toner and then run it through your mink and foil it. That's amazing. I think I've seen videos of people doing that and doing like multiple layers because you can run the same paper through your printer a few different times and then it'll you can foil it in between passes. It's pretty cool. 
Oh, and Heather signed up for the foil subscription. That's a great idea because then you know every month you'll get restocked on something fun. You know you're going to be using it a ton with that printer. Love that. Because I'm going with a brush and this is pretty delicate, I'm more stamping in my color. There we go. It's our little teal, so we'll set that to the side. Yeah, some really great gifts. I love that. Out of the way, I think we'll be okay to just blend down here on the paper. Oh, I should have done some of these hearts. I guess we'll just do like two for each, huh? We'll just, these can be a little bit lighter. My poor dog. I forgot to bring her bed in here before we started and now she's looking at me so sad laying on the hardwood. There's a stone for real this time. We'll go XO, XO. Um, maybe these ones we'll do from the top down. Change it up a little bit. Why not? I mean, obviously the O's doesn't matter which way you need them. Because you could just rotate them. To be fair, I think technically the X is, that's the same way too, but because they're a little bit wonky on purpose, just want to make sure that they are like the same. My grandma has visitors coming into town this week and she watches all of my lives. And um, I was giving her a hard time because I thought she was gonna miss tonight's because she was gonna have company, but I guess they, they got in and went to the hotel directly wherever they're staying tonight. And so I get her on the left. So shout out to my grandma. All right, and we'll do our little hearts. Oh yeah, Heather, if I can find one of those videos on Facebook or something, I'll tag you in it or I'll send it to you or something. I'll get it to you somehow because they are so cool when you can do multiple passes um, with that foil and the, with the printer. They look like magical. I think I'm seeing things. I just saw where I saw somebody said they had the flu. All right, there's our ink blending. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do our touch of gloss on these. Barbara, she really is. She is very special. Right, so let's lay these out. And I'm hoping by putting them on this paper, I can um, just go over everything and just like lift the paper and move it and we'll be good. Oh no, Shirley, I'm so sorry. I hope you're feeling better now. But having to go through Christmas in isolation has got to stink. Even if it's just part of it. Okay. So I never like clean my glossy gel or my touch of gloss. And I don't know that you have to clean the nozzle. 
but sometimes it gets that first little bit gets kind of stuck. And so I always try to squeeze it onto a scrap of paper first um, before committing, because once you, once you commit, I'm going to pull these off because we're going to glitter too. I wasn't thinking about that. Once you pull these off, um, no, once you start, nope, I just messed that all up. I squeeze the glossy gel off to the side so that if it bursts out or has like a clump or something weird, then you're not working on your actual project. My mom taught me that way back when in the 90s using puffy paint to always squeeze a little bit out onto some scrap, something so that you didn't end up with puffy paint all over if there was a little air pocket there. So I'm just doing, you can see tiny little circles. Let me get some ones. Tiny little circles and you can kind of go back in. I'm not even squeezing um, the bottle for that to go back in and smooth out. You just kind of, the little bit that'll be on the edge, you can just kind of run that over the edges and it will help take care of any little bubbles or anything. You don't need a lot of this. You just want a nice even coat. Like I said, the, the liquid, the water in the gel will kind of activate your inks. So you wanna be careful not to be pressing too hard or scratching too hard into your, uh, where you ink blended. Barbara, I don't store it upside down. And now that you asked that, I think that would probably solve my problem. I will definitely try storing it upside down. And then when we use it again, I will report back because I have a sneaking suspicion that that is um, the perfect idea to solve that situation. So thank you. I'm gonna do these four, the big letters first, and then we'll add in our little dusting of glitter and then we'll go and we'll do the hearts and the, um, cursive word. You want to try to not get this stuff on your back paper as much as possible, just because if you put that letter back into that, it will act as glue. Not the end of the world, but if you can avoid it, it just makes things easier for you. Okay. And I know this probably seems like it might be a little tedious, but that, those four are already done. For me, that amount of time is not out of the question. Hey, Dawn. Uh, surely, I bet that the YouTube family and online, just like when, you know, we were going through the pandemic, I feel like online crafty friends really helped a lot of us get through all of that. So I'm just taking a little bit of the ocean wave glitter. I'm not even really sprinkling it. I just have it in between my fingers and I'm just kind of barely pressing my fingers, wiggling back and forth because I do want a very light dusting of this. And I'm focusing it down at the bottom and then it can kind of fade away up towards the top. If you like a very glittered effect, by all means do more. But this is also why I'm working in batches because you have some time with the touch of gloss, but you don't have forever. This stuff doesn't take hours to dry. It dries in about 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Um, so 
enough time that I wanted to leave it. Um, I wanted to make sure I could leave it to fully dry versus trying to get everything done tonight on both cards, but not enough time that I want to wait to the end to add my glitter. If that makes sense. <laughs> yes, we have multiple dawns now. Multiple regular dawns. Regulars meaning here often, not like either of you are not super special. And I'm not going to glitter my view. So we will go ahead and add some to our hearts now. A little clumpier than I would have liked. And a little bit extra to the bottom, maybe that will smooth itself out. These are so fun. All right, we're just going to do two pieces of paper. And for this one, just you want to have super light pressure. Just again, kind of dragging what naturally starts to come out of the bottle versus really like you don't want to be worried about really squeezing down. You'll just get way too much. Like that, you'll get way too much just like that. Okay. You can kind of wipe off the excess from the back. So those are our first round of letters. We're gonna do the same idea with our purple ones. Where are these gonna go? On my kitchen table. All the way in the next room. Because I just don't trust myself. Look, I already, you can't look, I'm in the other room. I already overlapped the L and the V. The touch of gloss is a little bit self smoothing. So if that's not perfect, it's okay. It'll, it'll smooth it perfectly. Yeah, these letters are so cute. I hope I hope she does more of these. Michelle, I hope Michelle brings in more of this style because I really like it. And I've had, you guys know, I've had this touch of gloss for, I mean, since it came out, but for at least uh, multiple months. And I don't use it all the time, but I definitely use it, I'd say at least once a month. And it's, the bottle's still going completely strong. Sometimes I get that air bubble, which now I'm thinking is because I'm not storing it upside down, but I've never had it dry up. I've never had to like do anything crazy to unclog it. It's definitely been lovely to work with. And I think it's fun to add that glossy shine into like a little scene or in with our critters when we can. Um, even like on a mug or something is cute. But I just think that making these like big featured sentiment dyes really pop is super fun. So for the purple, we're gonna go in with orchid, a beautiful orchid glitter. You know what I was thinking of when I was getting this stuff ready was, I wonder what flock would do when mixed in. 
So you might have to have a little experiment with that when, that, when my new pink colors come in. These look like yummy donuts. We might have to make a donut card at some point too, because that's really cute. The other thing I will say is it's easier if you start, it doesn't matter which way, but if you start with your ink blended end, do it on like both sides and work your way down. Or if you start on the white part of your ombre or eat, like if you did two different colors, working in one direction is gonna give you a much better um, result because sometimes a little bit of that activated ink ends up on the tip of your um, applicator and you don't wanna be bringing that right, right down to the white line where if you kind of work your way down in the same direction as the ombre, it'll sort itself out. But I think you guys can also see the difference in color, how much more of like a blue purple this is versus the layer with the glossy gel. And that's again, because that ink's being reacted with that water. So keep that in mind that this technique will change up your colors a little bit of what if you're using a water reactive ink, it can change up that undertone just a smidge. It won't change it enough that, you know what I mean, when we use it, um, with like our paste and stuff will be good. But I will show you um, with that original slim line that I made, I inked up a, a layer to matte with and um, the colors don't technically match. I don't mind it, but you might. So I will show you that in just a second. And you can see these are curling a little bit because there's so much moisture. But once um, they dry and you, we're going to add them with foam, sorry, with foam, and it won't be an issue. Let's see if you can see the color difference. Yeah, I think you can. So this ink is the dress shop ink, and so is this. And then this has dress shop ink and then a layer of raspberry glitter glossy gel. So this has a much more of a blue undertone where this is much, this is almost like a purpley pink to me in comparison with this being a little more like bubble gummy. So just keep that in mind that that color change will make a difference if you're putting something next to it that's kind of the original ink. All right, let me move these and we'll make our background with our stencils. So I was about to cough. Lucky for me in my kitchen next to where those are being stored was my drink. All right. So now we're going to do our background panels. We're going to do two full A, uh, A2 sized card panels with the intention that I'm knowing now I'm going to be trimming them down at some point, just not yet. So we have these two that are five and a half by four and a quarter. We're going to do one with the Hearts of Plenty stencil, which is the stencil that I used for this guy. And then I also, just to change it up, want to use the um, big snowflake stencil again because these are super pretty so let's do hearts of plenty first we'll do love with the um heart so we'll do teal with our hearts i have my glossy gel that i did have to have my husband help me open before he went out to his garage and I have my palette knife, which has seen better days. Let me scrape some of this off of the side really quick. Because last time I got some like loose paint in there, it was yucky. 
I'm going to need a new glossy gel soon. I should have checked that and ordered some with this, that flock order I put in. So I'm going to grab that and we're going to take some of our ocean wave glitter. And we are, you know what I forgot to do is ink blend first. I think we'll be okay though. We're gonna make our glitter paste and then I can ink blend real fast. And I feel like I need less glitter in my paste if I know I'm gonna be inking under because that ink showing through to me will make the glitter look even more impactful. But you don't want this to be super gritty if you put too much glitter, it'll be hard to spread. So we just want this to be still nice and easily spreadable. We will take our, that one has purple on it, so I should switch this way. Um, and you know what? I am gonna add a little bit of washi tape to the back just because we're gonna do the ink blending and the paste and we want them to stay lined up. So we're going to go in and just, and I don't have printer paper down underneath. So we're going to end up having to clean the desk when we're done. It's okay if some areas are lighter and some areas are darker for this. I mean, I don't mind. I guess I should say if some are darker and some are lighter. That's not too crazy. Okay. I'll give this one more good stir. And we're going to just work our way across. I don't ever worry about wiping off my stencil with that extra ink because for this kind of technique, because I want I want um, that color again to kind of mix into my paste and I think it's just going to intensify things. But if I had two separate colors or um, I don't know, if you, if there was ever a reason, if you hinge your stencil and just have the one side taped down, you can lift it and kind of wipe and then put it in the same spot and go in with your second process. But I don't, I'm not worried about that. And honestly, if I had two colors, if I had an ombre here, I would just work, like if we had a pink and a purple, I would just work this way across and it would sort itself out too. Okay, so you have a nice even coat. The whole way across. I'm gonna peel off my tape now so that that does not get stuck to the edges. And I'm also gonna take my knife and just kind of smooth down any of those edges. And as that glossy gel dries, that glitter is gonna pop and shine through and it's gonna be beautiful. So I'm gonna put this in here on the table as well. Everything out of my way. And I, I wish I had something that needed, you know what, um, what do I have a scrap up here? Just some white. I don't wanna waste all of this glossy gel and I don't have another jar to put it in. So I am just gonna apply it flat to a piece of white cardstock and we can always die cut it later and use it on something else, right? Like one of those little hearts that we just cut and um, created with would be super cute out of this glitter glossy gel. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect either. So that way, it's not a huge amount anyway that we'd be losing, but why waste it if we don't have to? Okay, and then I'm also going to rinse this off really quickly. You always want to make sure that you're rinsing off your palette, your palette knife, and your stencil pretty fast. You don't want your glitter paste or glossy gel or matte medium or whatever you're using to adhere, dry and adhere. You might be able to peel or wash it off later, but the longer it dries, the harder it is to get that clean. So getting that rinsed off. My poor husband, I always have a stencil or two in my dish rack, just in with the plates. He's probably always like, wonder what card she made. He can just check the dish rack. Hey, Krista, I'm excited you could join too. I'll save it for my notes if I can get this ink wiped up really quickly. Perfect. Because I was using that glossy gel, I'm gonna get one more piece of printer paper. Hey, Lori, I know we're uh, going over our normal time, but I do promise that I think this one will be very worth it. You know what I didn't think about? Mm, that should be good. I was gonna say, I didn't think about how these aren't super, super close. Um, like the hearts. In theory, I would do these all separate, but because we're live and I want to get this taken care of. Also, I have that purple splotch on this cardstock. So instead of wasting it, we're going to line up that center section of our snowflake right over it. No one will ever know. We could also flip it over. Oops. This time, I'm not going to forget. And we're going to ink blend this up first. I think it's cute to have the XOXO with the snowflakes because it could be for Valentine's or it could be for any kind of winter card. You could put a little thinking of you on the inside, uh, warm wishes this winter kind of thing, and it would be perfect. Doesn't have to just be Valentine's Day. And the same thing, you could use these dyes um, and make them fun, super bright popping colors and have it for a birthday card. Um, just because it's an I love you and out with a Valentine's kind of themed release, Galentine's. These to me are definitely ones we could use year round. Yep. So you can kind of, this is what I meant with that hinge. We could kind of check it, we can wipe this off if we wanted to with a paper towel. And when we go to put it down, it's in the exact same space. So having that one longer piece of tape allows you to make that a little more like adjustable. All right, last round of glossy gel and then we will wrap up for the night. And this guy, we have, we're using a lot less gel for this because only those snowflake areas are gonna have that, that gel. And it's so much less surface area than those hearts. So I'm gonna, I made too much with the last batch anyway. So I'm gonna use just a little bit less for this one. We're going in with that orchid glitter. And we have played around in the past with adding reinker straight into our glossy gel to tint it. And it did work, but it made the glossy gel a lot thinner and it definitely took much longer to dry. So that's why I decided to just ink up my paper first. Um, it was still good to experiment. I'm still glad that we did that but I think that inking and then adding your glitter gel on top 
is just a, a much nicer solution. If you're looking for something with more color than just the glitter. And I wanna make sure that I'm going back over and scraping across in bigger strokes so that everything ends up nice and flat. And you can see I still have put a little too much gel. That's okay. After we are, are done, I will uh, add it to something else. I think I pressed a little bit too hard in the middle there. You can see I kind of had a little, a little spot ooze out. I wonder. Yeah, a little tiny flat brush, kind of right along the edges, clean that up a little bit. I'm sure we can also make that work with our, um, like when we put our letters down. So that one's a little more simple, but it's still gonna be super beautiful. Yeah, even with, with like using a little too much, like making too much gel somewhat regularly for these. Um, I've had this glossy gel literally for months, oh, probably almost a year, and I still have a good bit to go. Like that's still gonna last me a, multiple cards. So definitely a good bang for your buck and you can customize it with your own glitters or colors or whatever you need. Definitely love that. Um, perfect. I'm glad you think it still looks good. I like it. All right. Well, that is going to be everything for tonight. Even that took way longer than I thought it would. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me um, for all of this. And we will be back on Thursday with part two where we'll take all of these different pieces and assemble them. So we have two beautiful finished cards at the end. Um, if anyone, as always, if you guys have any requests for products or techniques that you wanna see used, I'm starting to plan out all of January's lives and content. So please, I'm trying to be a little more on ahead of the game this year in 2024, instead of deciding things you know, the day of or the day before, I would like to pre-plan these out a little better, but I'm always looking for input and requests. You can always leave a comment and let me know. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you guys had a great weekend. Like we said, I hope you have a good day tomorrow and I will see you back here on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. And until then, guys, happy crafting. Have a good night.